Hello students. Last day we have completed the species that was Fasciola hepatica in the phylum Platyhelminths. In the phylum Platyhelminths also we require another larva and that larva is Tinea solium. So that Tinea solium that actually causes a disease, that disease is Tineasis. Okay, so Tineasis disease. What happens? What are the main uh, uh, host where actually it complete the life cycle? See, in case of tin that tinea solium, the organism is also a diagenic parasite. So this is also a diagenic parasite or diagenetic parasite. See, now if it is a diagenic parasite, that means it completes the life cycle in two hosts. What are the two hosts here in this case? There are two hosts. The primary host is, so this primary host is human. Okay. So it causes tineasis in human body. And the secondary host, the secondary host is the pig. Okay. So that's why this uh, worm, this tinea solium is also known as pig tapeworm. So this is the tapeworm generally also we can call this is as tapeworm now to see uh, the body morphology how actually it look like first of all the organism have how many parts the whole body is divided into three parts okay so if you see this organism they are going to have three parts this is the first part okay so this is the head so head like structure have appeared here and that head the uppermost region the apex so this apex of the head this is known as rostellum okay so this is known as rostellum and this head is also called as collex okay remember the body is divided into three parts so the first part is head or collex where the apex is known as rostellum now this rostellum this is guarded by this is guarded by actually two rows of hooks okay so this way two rows of hooks are present around 32 hooks are present alternately uh, the first row of hook will have longer hooks and the uh, beneath this hooks they are the smaller hooks so these are the hooks present which is actually a parasitic adaptation so hooks are present in how many rows there are two rows so two rows are present alternately the first uh, rows of hooks they are having the larger hooks and the later one that will have smaller hooks now in the body actually throughout there are going to be four small small suckers present and in this case these are the true suckers okay so here the another sucker that is present actually beneath so here from this side you can see only uh, three one complete and two of them on the sides they are half so these are the true suckers okay so these are the true suckers so this organism will have this part first part mouth or uh, sorry the head or that scolex so that scolex the apex region is going to be known as rostella which is going to guard by two rows of hooks and here this organism will have four suckers and those suckers are true that means it perform the special function and what is the function take the juice bile juice or the blood or the lymph that will be taken up by that tinea solium or the tapeworm now come to the next part that means after the head what is the next part that will be undifferentiated layer actually where very small small segments have been seen so what is that? This is the neck region. So their body is divided into how many parts? Three parts. So first part head discussed. Next one neck. So this neck have very small small segment like, like things but those segments are not the true segments. And after that come to the next part. What is that? This is the body. So this body is going to have the segments. It resembles the true segments also that means this organism shows that yes 
the segments are visible but rather we will call this organism is a truly segmented animal we will not call this as a segmented animal okay so this segmentation is not true okay why it is not true because repeated organs are not found so here rather we will call this is a true segment what we can call these are known as the proglottids okay we will call these are as the proglottids proglottids are actually the false segments now the whole body this whole body parts what we can call this whole body is also known as strobila okay so this strobila will have the false segments or strobilation occurs where each segments are known as proglottids now see from this organism the neck region will have very small small segments here okay so those segments will not develop any type of reproductive organs now from 200 suppose this is the 200 segment 200 to 250 segment 250 segment this segments have only the male reproductive organs from 250 to around 650 suppose from 250 up to 650 throughout this region they are going to have both the male and the female reproductive organs and from 650 up to the last this segments will not going to be any type of reproductive organ that means it is neither male reproductive organs or uh, nor the female reproductive organs rather it is called as uterus why it's not a true uterus actually what happens in those segments the organism stored the embryos their zygotes are stored in the last uh, few proglottids around from 650 to the last segments that means up to how many segments can be present there are around 800 to 1000 segments are present so from 650 up to the 1000 segments what we can call they are the uterus where just the uh, the uh, zygotes they are now undergoing the embryogenesis process they are forming the cells now that embryos will be stored only in the that uh, proglottids the last 650 up to 800 or 801 or 1000 so those proglottids they are known as gravid proglottids so those 650 to the last 800 up to 1000 proglottids what we can call it they are known as the gravid proglottids where the uh, zygotes or the embryos they have been stored now just see this organism the tinea solium completes its life cycle in two hosts i told what are they one is primary host that uh, primary host is human and secondary host is pig now just see the life cycle okay so i will draw only the elementary canal right so this is the human elementary canal this is the human elementary canal and this one this is the pig elementary canal okay now just see what happened first of all in the human first of all we'll start from human so this is the human gi tract and this is the pig gi tract or gastrointestinal tract so in human what happened the larva the last larval stage actually is there what is that larva this is known as cysti circus larva so that cysticercus larva is present and that cysticercus larva within very small period of time transform into an adult. So what is that adult, that adult one? That is this one. So this very long organism. So see this the adult one, the adult tapeworm will attach to the intestine, wall of the intestine with the help of these hooks and suckers and after that it starts to take the digestive juice from our body it causes the intestinal leeches that means in the intestine very small small blisters they will start to appear maybe also bloodless loss can also occur so um, obviously that individual will have digestive problems so what happens that organism that cysticercus larva transform into adult 
Now, unlike the fasciola hepatica, what we have seen in fasciola hepatica, that that organism undergo cross fertilization. But in this organism, the cross fertilization is not there. They will have self fertilization. That means from this 200 to 250 segments, the male organs are present. 250 to 650, both male and the female organs are present. Now, what will happen from 650 to around 800 to 1000, the zygote or that embryos are present. So, now what will happen? Those embryos, they will just bud off from the last segments. That means from the neck region, new new segments will be start forming and from the last region, the oldest segments will just bud off. And whenever those segments get bud off, that phenomenon, what we can call, this is known as epolysis. So, apolysis is a phenomenon by which the gravid proglobates are lost from the parent body. This is known as apolysis. So, what happened? Now, whenever it gets detached in the intestine, what will happen? That uh, skin layer, whatever is present on the gravid proglobate, they will start to loss. Now, whenever it is lost, what will happen? Those larvas, they will start to become exposed. So, those larvas are exposed actually from this gravid proglobate. Now what happened, those uh, small, small ancestral larvae, they will just come outside. So whenever the human excrete, they remove the waste product, fecal matter. So with the fecal matter, the larvae, this ancestral larvae comes out. Now what happened, that uh, fecal matter, if it is taken by the pig, you can know that this pig can take any type of food product. It can take also fecal matter of human. So that human fecal matter, which is contaminated with the tapeworm larvae, and it is taken by the pig, then inside the pig body, this larva that enters. Okay, so whenever the pig uh, takes the fecal matter, with that the larvae also enters, so that larvae will enter into the pig intestine now. And whenever it comes, here you can see it transform into a larva. What we can call, this is known as hexacant larva. So this hexacant larva will have six chitinous hooks. Okay, so six chitinous hooks are or uh, some plate like structures for attachment it is present so this hexacan larva will transform to the next larva which is still having its outer covering so what is that larva now after that this is known as oncosphere larva so this hexacan larva will transform into the oncosphere larva now this oncosphere larva will reach the blood vessel of pig and whenever it is reaching the blood vessel, now the blood vessel, they are transporting the nutrients and gases throughout the body. With blood, this oncosphere will reach also to different parts of the uh, body, that is each and every regions of the tissues. That oncosphere now will take the nutrients, the food actually from the different tissues. So everywhere in the pig body now is going to have this oncosphere larva. So what at what period of time what happens? That oncosphere larva is present throughout the body. That means in the flesh this that uh, oncosphere is present. Now what happened? Whenever that uh, pig is taken by human and that pork is uncooked, uncooked pork is taken it is taken by human then what happened that oncosphere larva will enter into the pig uh, from the pig body into human body now human takes it feeds it so that measle prog that can contain that oncosphere larva and that oncosphere larva whenever it enters into the human body now after that it transforms into the last larva what is that that is cysticercus larva and once it formed the cysticercus larva it formed the adult one and that adult what we can call it this is known as the adult tapeworm. That adult tapeworm will undergo apolysis. The last gravid proglottids start to bud off. That contain those embryos. That embryos come outside with fecal matter. That fecal matter, if it is taken by human, then, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. If that fecal matter is taken by the pig, 
Then in that pig intestine, that larva embryo transform into a larva. What is that larva? That is hexacant. And that hexacant that will transform into the next larva that is oncosphere. Oncosphere reach the blood vessel. From the blood vessel, it reaches the different tissues. Everywhere in the flesh of the pig, this oncosphere present. And that onco oncosphere, if it is taken, that means that poop uh, that pork is cooked but it is undercooked suppose the vessels they are not taken properly then after that what happened this oncosphere will not die and with that flesh that uh, meat that oncosphere will enter into human body so this way the whole life cycle completes so the life cycle of tinea solium or tapeworm it completes in two hosts what are they human this is the primary host and the pig this is the secondary host i have not given the diagram you just uh, click a photo then after that draw it along with the uh, life cycle i have given derivation the whole life cycle in your pdf and only the diagram i have not given you just draw it from here okay so take a picture then after that take a screenshot and draw it after the life cycle so this is all about the tinea solium this way we also completed the phylum platyhelminths in the phylum platyhelminths we have seen the general characters then after that we have seen the life cycle of fasciola hepatica and then we have seen the life cycle of tinea solium so that's all about the phylum platyhelminths after that we'll see the next phylum that is Escarmentis. Thank you.